just we'll get into some leagues and we will we'll start playing. Hash these things out when we go. video going up for another one for Top Deck Productions. It's been a while for uh, this deck. So, so yeah. We'll be able to see. I guess I'm starting to develop an opinion on it. And I think I think the power in this deck comes from Mishra's Bobble and Gurmag Angler. Not faithless looting, to say. You know, I think that there's... Um, Another version of this deck, or a better version of this list that plays that doesn't play Faithless Looting and plays Serum Visions. Especially considering Serum Visions has synergy with Bobble, where you know if you put a removal spell on top of your deck, you can just draw the removal spell with the Bobble. So yeah, I tend to think that uh, that the power, while Serum Visions is pretty good, the power is not in the card. Chats to get out. I don't know what's been going on, but I cannot see the chat in Twitch like I used to be able to. There's some static here. Part of the reason I was having issues. Um, this hand is I'm going to keep seven. Yeah, I'll keep this. It's close, but I think I'll mulligan it, or I'll keep it. Excuse me. Playing against the PTQ, there is no longer static. That's what I like to hear. The PTQ winning. Goblin's deck. Alright, so now we can do the bobble trick, which I love. Okay, this hand's great. It's going to be a watery grave. We have a stubborn denial as well for the uh, for the first. Oh, geez. I think we're just going to take this Burning Tree Emissary, because my opponent's going to go nuts if they cast this Burning Tree Emissary next turn. We, I'm just saying we had a Stubborn Denial for the first... Um, de yeah, Devastating Stubbins. That's the one out of this deck that's pretty cool. So that's what they drew. So they didn't draw land. So we're going to get cracked here. We're drawing a Thought Seize. However, I don't believe we can cast this Thought Seize. Let's get this Death Shadow in play. And we'll hold this Street Wraith. Yeah, what a world we live in. Where... Where goblins... Goblins can win... Can just win. You got these guys coming in? Jeez. Okay, we're drawing Nasty. All right, I think I'm just gonna block this Foundry Street Denison. It's gonna. It, there's no difference between these two cards here. This could get bigger. So, and the Angler might feed me extra cards. So, I thought scour my opponents, but I also despise this deck. But you do. You talking about back in the day, like? Or you're talking like what do you mean beat UW control? Oh wow. One, two, three, four, five. So I know my opponent's four cards. I can attack them for seven. I can cycle my street wraith, attack them for seven, and then play Erm Gurmag Death Shadow. That doesn't seem like a good plan though. Oh, Supreme Verdict's too slow. Yeah, I can see that. This deck does go wide really well. We're just gonna play conservatively here. Not lose to whatever it is. Um, Goblin Grenade. There's the Lava Man. Okay. Um. 
Um, so they've got Firebrand, Bushwhacker X. All right, so I'm going to attack with both of my creatures, so they have to chop one. And they ping me down to five. Ooh, if they kick the Bushwhacker, that's not quite going to get me. I shouldn't have played my land because I'm not going to crack it. <clears throat> I think I'm going to stream the uh, Modern Challenge. Uh, modern challenge this weekend. Ooh, that's bold. This is a grenade. They're definitely picking whatever thing they want to sacrifice. Oh, bushwhacker. Okay. They have to wrath away their whole board, and I go to three. Okay, that makes it easy. What a coincidence. I might even play in that challenge. Well, stay away from my side of the bracket. I can't beat you. You're just going to wipe the floor with me. So against this deck, we want to go full, full grindy. Bring these in. We want the explosives. We want the lava man. Want the brutalities and the Lilianas. Not really interested in De Dismember. I'll probably shave an Angler because I'm bringing Grim Lava Mancer. Shave a Snapcaster. I can keep like a card like a Braden also. Or I can keep the Angler and cut like a Thoughtseize and try something like this. I haven't been really. So in playing this deck, I have not been really interested or impressed with Snapcaster Mage. Like, I think once you add the four bobbles, you dilute the deck enough. So there's just not, between the, like, you're so focused on delving and so focused on bobble, and there's less instances of sorceries, and Snapcaster Mage isn't as good in this version of the deck. It's been just a little bit underperforming. I like the Stubborn Denials, because they're going to keep in, like, Flame of Keld and Goblin Grenade, and those are important to hit. Command's too slow. A braid's okay, but I don't really know what else to play for it. Like, if I wanted to get further off of my graveyard plan to devote it to, um, to devote it to more to Grim Lava Mancer, then I can go something like this, which I don't hate. Like, oftentimes, Angler's not really winning me the game. It's Death Shadow. So I think I can actually get away with cutting one. Snapcaster Mage really hasn't performed well in this version of the deck, I think. I think this is definitely, like, a three... A three Snapcaster Mage build. Oh. oh, I actually got rid of the music the Nightbot was playing. I wondered if anyone noticed that. I stopped playing it. it got a little annoying when I was listening to it. You know, like four snaps in many decks. What about the ones that Kevin plays? You play two Snapcasters in this version. Hmm. I can buy, like, so I think I want to see one Snapcaster Mage, like, every game. P for the most part. Because it either means that, like, it usually means that I either killed them before it mattered, before the Snapcaster Mage mattered, which is also okay, but it also is kind of like a little bit of an insurance policy. I've been working on a version of this deck that plays Serum Visions and Bobble. I think I finished that up here. I've been playing this. I'm going to play this later in the week because my wife's gone this week, so I'm going to do a bit of streaming. I don't know. I'm not in love with both engineered explosives, I think. But it's based, it's much similar to Friedman's list, but I just cut the Faithless Lootings and added another bo I cut a bobble and cut a couple other cards to just get Serum Visions back in the deck. 
Yeah, this hand's good. We have a discard spell, a death shadow, a stubborn denial, and a bobble. So, like, we're doing stuff. Yeah, I just think currently getting stormed off against the cube. Oh, man, I've been drafting these sweet, like, powered bug value decks and having so much fun and getting my ass kicked while I'm doing it. Like... I love playing. Like, my favorite deck in Cube is the Leovold Wheel deck. All right, so let's take a look. I think I'm basically... So am I 100% casting this Inquisition? Yeah, I need to interact. So let's check out what's going on here. They're drawing a land. This is going to get Blood Crypt. Demon Lord. Oh, that's the new one. That card won me some games when I was getting ready for the GP. Alright. So I think this is a pretty straightforward goblin guide. Make my opponent's next turn kind of awkward. Alternatively, if I let them have the goblin guide, they crack me for four. And I'm still only at 13. So I'm going to take the goblin guide. Yeah, what's impressed me about this deck is just, it's so nice playing with Bobble. Like, I forget how nice playing with Bobble and Serum Visions is. Or Bob Bobble and Street Wraith. Like, just the, the overall consistency it adds. Alright, so we're going to get our boy down. And he's not going to get bolted. Let's get Watery Grave. And let's get the Brick Wall down. Bring back Traverse. Yeah, I miss I miss playing that deck from time to time, and I think I still would play that deck if I thought I could beat humans. But I just have no real confidence in my ability to beat humans. So my opponent can go Bolt Bushwhacker me. Well, the wind looks like it's pretty intense out there, Meg. We've had terrible weather recently. To go to the dog park, but it's the wrong thing. Yeah. Can I have a glass of water, please? Can I have a glass of wine, too? Thank you. All right, first one. I, okay, so here comes. Uh oh. We're going to be in for a bit of a smacking here. So we're going to go to three here. Block this. Take six. Next turn, we're going to have to stub the bolts and hope my opponent doesn't draw um, draw a way to just do more damage besides that lightning bolt. So my opponent's basically, unless we draw battle range, my opponent's got a brick. So I can Thought Scour myself. Storm fizzled nice. I can Thought Scour myself, and then hold a braid for the... Oh, and then I can't a braid. I need to be able to go... I need to stub this block here. But if I Thought Scour myself and find... Thank you. Do you want to say hi to the chat? Yes. My wife doesn't appreciate you guys as much. I think, I think we do as well, but... Though I can attack and hit this and then hope they don't land a point of haste. Alright. That seems kind of... I mean, the problem is, like, I feel like I'm going to need a battle rage or, or a repeated way to get his creatures off the board. I need, like, a Liliana of the Last Hope. Look at our last hopes where we want to be. Did you draft any sweet cards? Do you have any power? Or Soul Ring, which is the tenth piece of power that no one talks about. And is secretly the best card in the cube. Pack one, pick one best card. Ancient Tomb is like I've I've picked Ancient Tomb like 16th or 17th, or not six, like fifth or sixth pick before. And I'm just like, what is going on here? What's up, bud?
Yeah, I, I think it's that good. All right, so we're still going to go a raid here, block here, take one. They're just sandbagging their bolts. They should upkeep it. Okay. Or not. That's not bad. Oh, I played the wrong land. That's not bad. That lets me start attacking. I definitely, definitely played the wrong land there. Just zoning out. Because I don't even have to block this next turn. I do think I have to start attacking. Like, I can't just sit here against a deck with... Goblin Grenade and Lightning Bolt. Sure. All right. Like we're gonna, we're gonna give we're gonna give the old kill you a try. You got another one, my friend? There we go. We're clearly PT, PBTQ, or P, we're Moto PTQ quality players here after beating that one. We had 23 players in here already. Thank you guys for showing up and hanging out. Uh, I appreciate you all for being here, hanging out tonight, playing some Death Shadow. If you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button. You should check out uh, Carver, who's their sponsor of the stream. Gamer Craze is the store I learned to play Magic at. The Crystal Commerce is linked below. You should check them out. If you guys want to support me more, go over to my YouTube channel. It is free. And hit the subscribe button. That That's the best way to do it. So, all right. Let's get back over to, into our second match here. Yeah, I think, I think the most underrated cards in Cube are... Soul Ring, even though Soul Ring, like everyone knows Soul Ring is good, they don't know how good it is. And Ancient Tomb. Like, and then, like, whatever it is, the Mox that you have to ditch a card to, the one, the one that lands plays, Mox Diamond. I think, I think those cards are, like, really underrated. And, should be picked much higher. But I don't win playing cube. I draft Leovold with wheels. And I have a lot of fun. I play a lot of close games. And I don't win them. Because that's just kind of how the powered cube works. You revealed Mind Slaver. <sighs> um, I'm going to keep this hand because we have a discard spell on one, double redraw. Like It's a very interactive hand. We're going to need to find lands, but I've got a look plus two redraws plus a third redraw. I have four, I have three redraws and four looks basically to find another land. We're actually going to keep that one. I think that one is worth, worth it because it just kind of pulls this entire hand together here. Nice. That's vintage cube though. But that's kind of what you sign up for. Okay, here we go. So we're just gonna take this search for his Kanta. If they had one Serum Visions, I would take Serum Visions, but we're just gonna get this search out of here. This is gonna be a tough one. We're gonna have to slow, we're gonna have to slow down a little bit with our life total. Make sure our Death Shadow's out of bolt range. What a greedy keep. Like, can you actually keep that on the draw as a control deck and have you know and, and sleep good at night? If you make this keep, like, are you going to write home about this? Because that seems greedy. 
We went top top. So they got lands coming. All right, we're gonna we're gonna hope here that we hit a land. All right, got lucky. So let's go get a blood crypt and get down nasty. We can ditch these, and then we can ditch our creatures. Um, yeah, we'll leave the. Th We'll leave the thought seeds. I, I I would be willing to bet we won't snap it back. The thought seeds in the end position. I guess I should have. I didn't see that there were two in there. I should have uh, changed that up. We played humans yet? I don't played humans yet. Or uh, this league, uh, Hidewire ninety seven. I did play it earlier today and uh, was fortunate enough to win. This is another search for his content that's going to be pretty annoying. It's a path exile. Okay. That's all right. They path us. It's just going to turn on our Snapcaster. So I think this is going to give me a blue source. And then we're probably going to go Thoughtseize, play Death Shadow, have Stubborn Denial up. Is Thoughts out of them greedy? Too greedy with them killing top top? I think so, Darkling7. I don't like doing that when uh, the graveyard is so intricate. In this deck, but I mean, I have done it, but I don't necessarily think that it's the best way to do it for for most time. I'm sure there's times when it's right, but well, there you go. They went top. They put two cards on tops. So they're just ripping lands like it's their job. All right. Um, I think I'm gonna take this mana leak. I'm fairly sure certain that we're gonna be able to. I should have. This is a. This was a sequencing mistake. I should have bobbled first. Just still getting back into there, into use with the bobble in there. So there's a land. Yeah. So let's play our death shadow. Um, the matchup's pretty poor in game one. I think you are actually favored after sideboard. But it's a tough. It's a tough game one matchup. Like you have to, you have to do like a transformative sideboard into like a Grixis control deck. I'm gonna thought scour my main phase. Well, actually, so we went top tops. So there's another land on top. I'm fairly sure. So then we're just gonna hold off here. I think there's anywhere at 3 DBR over 2 to steal it, or is it too much at that point? I think 3 Battle Rages is too much in this deck. Battle Rage, so like, wow. All right, so Battle Rage isn't even, the, so they, they drew the card, they knew it was on top there. Battle Rage isn't even like your main game plan after sideboard, which is where your game gets better. You just transform into much more of a, Control deck, um, slash. You're much more of a control deck, a grim lava mancer, like stock your graveyard kind of deck. All right, not bad. So they have bolt bolt to fairy X. So I think we're gonna go for the kill here. With before before damage, because my opponent can't go like path this, um, and then bolt me field of ruin me. Yeah, see that's what they're going for. They're going for they're going for bolt bolt kill me. We we just force we just force the action here. Okay, so the first one resolves. And we stub the second one. 
And we got them. Got him. All right. So after sideboard, I don't really know how this matchup goes after sideboard with this sideboard plan. I think I would like to bring in my Kologon's commands, my Liliana of the Last Hopes, my Stub, and my Stroke. Um, I don't think I want these six cards. I think I want my Brutalities. I'm not super high on Lightning Bolts. I kind of want to keep in Dismember because I want to have at least enough answers to Celestial Colonnade. So, like, I have three, basically. I don't think Engineered Explosive is very good or Braid or Lava Mancer. Esper Death Shadow. I've played Esper Death Shadow before. i played... My, like, flex slot where, like, the Colgon's command was, was Anguish and Making. That card was actually, that card overperformed for me. I thought that card was pretty good. But you're like the Death Shadow deck that beats all the other Death Shadow decks, right? Because you, you have Snapcaster Mage and Lingering Souls. So you, like, can't lose a mirror. Again, I'm going to keep this. This is kind of a loose keep, but... Against Jeskai, I want all my resources, and this hand's just playable. I can stub something important on turn two, which they're like they have, they have a lot of high impact uh, two drop enchantments, especially after sideboard that's worth stubbing. Why well, I cut wraiths? Because they're a deck that's like attacking my life total a lot, and uh, I would like the game to go long. Like or the, the game is going to go long, and I don't want to be drawing street wraiths in the late game. Now, that might be different with Faithless Lootings, and I don't play too, too much with Faithless Looting, but that's something worth thinking about. So that's a card they kept on top. So they kept the Seer and Visions on top. If they don't play a land, I'm going to stub the Seer and Visions. Yeah, we're just going to get... I like being aggressive with my Stubborn Denials, especially after I have four of them. And I have another in my hand, so... So they got a cryptic on top. Let's draw three cards. Thoughtseize. Swamp. It is a little bit of a buzzkill that we drew both of our basics. Not gonna lie. Like that's a little tough. Okay. So let's go get an over no, let's go get watery grave, excuse me. Actually, I should get blood crypt with this. Yeah, I shouldn't have fetched. I should have thought seized off of this land here. Because now I cut off, like, I need another land to go Snapcaster Mage plus Blue Spell. Uh, I have the Wars on Child Mullet. The last time my Fox 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 pushes. Uh, I think it is, but. Yeah, I think, you, I think Path to Exile is very good right now. So the way this game's pacing, I'm going to be able to work around this Supreme Verdict. I'm just going to take the Snapcaster Mage. And then next turn, I'm going to go Snap Thoughtseize, take their Cryptic Command. Seems like small changes in the deck makes it... Yes, I agree. Yeah, this, is, this has been a rough setup here for the home team. But it looks like we're getting out of it. So let's get... And this is just taking... Actually, I think I'm going to take Supreme Verdict. My opponent would like to... I mean, I guess that was that could have been loose. I can force the issue with a Thought Seize this turn. And with a combination of Thought Seize and stuff, I should be good. Alright, we're, we're good with all this... We're good with all this drawing of... Lands. We don't need any more of those for the rest of the game. This colonnade is looming, though, and I am gonna need, um, I am gonna need like some answer to this thing. So they're gonna obviously counter draw this. I'm gonna stub it, and then we're gonna hope that they drew a spell. This is like the nut Death Shadow Interactive draw. Yeah, they drew another cryptic, which is gas. 
So like what makes this this draw busted is if we had a, a Gurmag Angler or a Death Shadow, but we don't. So this is going to get me a Watery Grave into play tapped. Because we're, we're totally going to lose this game if we don't find a big threat here. And we are just not finding big threats. We need like another Snapcaster Mage, just something that we can answer this colonnade with. All right, so there are just mono spells, which is good and bad. Well, they didn't fire up their colonnade. There's six mana. I don't understand why. Oh, they have secure the wastes. Okay, so my opponent's gonna secure the waste me out of this game. Which is not good. They they showed me a field of ruin. Some just guy decks play field of ruin. All right, so that can combo with my Kolagon's command to get rid of this colony, which is nice. But I'm about to get secure the wasted here. Oh, nice. So let's. This is like a very very aggressive line from my opponent here. Oh, we got a Celestial Purge out of their hand, which is pretty good. It's good against all of our threats. I still I still think my opponent should have fired up and gotten in the red zone there. Like, your Colonnade's going to kill me very quickly. Geist of St. Traft. Not bad. So now I've got to figure out what I want to do with this. I probably just want to try to chump block this this uh, Snapcat, this Geist here, and then rebuy the the uh, rebuy it with my Kolagon's command. Okay, so there's a Colonnade. You got to it. Oh man. Yeah, that's the plan. That was the plan there. All right, what do we got coming? They have an island coming, which is good for the home team. Okay, Thought Scour's not bad. At least it's a redraw. Karn's powerful. So I actually need my opponent, I would like my opponent to attack with their Geist. That sucks. Oh, before damage, let me, because I might find a way to get rid of it here. Yeah, we still haven't hit a threat. It's very odd of them not attacking with this Geist. I mean... I guess I get it. Like, they don't want to trade with the Snapcaster, so it's not that odd. Okay, so Snap, Dismember. Alright, we're still playing Magic. Just gotta hope my opponent doesn't find a piece of interaction. It doesn't take a lot for them to kill me. So inside of combat, I'm actually going to let him attack with it because I want him to attack with the Geist too. I'm going to one here. Ideally, oh, they had a Lightning Helix. Is that still... That's still okay, right? Yeah. So now we just... Flash this in. Dismember the colonnade. I 
And the reason I did this like this was because I wanted him to commit this Geist to the board because I just wanted to clear everything. And now we're going to try to draw a step my opponent out of this game with Kulligan's commands. And if I didn't deal, I, I needed to deal with the Geist eventually. Oh, they have a Snapcaster Mage, okay. Yeah, that's what I, I think that's what they should have done. But, you know, they didn't do it. And that hand, we, we like, we easily win that game if we have a, uh, we're going to keep it the same way it is. If we have just one threat in the early turns there, like on the draw, we just pick them apart. He might flashback cryptic. I should give my opponent the outs. I got the wise, the wise guy in the chat. Letting me know that I should always play to my opponent being an idiot as an out. I've done it before. Yeah, hopefully I can start off 2-0 in this league. I, I went 4-1 the last league I played this deck in, so I'm on kind of a little bit of a roll. So this hand is pretty threat dense, can deal with a big thing, and has uh, kind of a grind card. I'm going to keep this, cause I, partially because I don't like mulliganing in a matchup like this. This hand could be better. Like, we obviously could have some earlier interaction. Yeah, it's not super great, but I, I don't want to throw back... I really don't want to throw back a seven that can play magic in an in an interactive magic interactive matchup. I just don't want to go down a resource. Well, that was the worst draw in my deck. Yeah, a can trip would be good here. Just something to manipulate, especially after drawing that Liliana. And if we lose this game, it's going to be because of my keep. Like, I, I, this is a hand that I decided I wanted to be on the play. I didn't want to be down another card. Games are going to get a little slower after sideboard. Looks like my opponent's not going to... I would assume my opponent's got, like, a search or something like that. I just don't want to jam it. All right, well. So at least I can get the cards flowing a little bit. I'm going to wait till my opponent fetches. There's no need for me to crack this before... Um, they crack their fetch land. So now we'll do it at the end of the turn. We're going to do it now because we can hit a stub. Oftentimes I do it in my opponent's upkeeps, but I would like to hopefully find a stub and have that be relevant. So they draw a purge, which is good. Good hit for them. All right. We have a lot of high impact cards. So we just got to hope to make it into this late game a little bit. Alright. Thought scour myself. Alright. We milled over a Faithless Looting, which has been... This interaction has impressed me. When you mill into the Faithless Looting, I like it a lot better than just casting it. Okay, we're going to get an island with this. I could have flashed in a Snapcaster Mage there. That was a mistake. I could have gone Snapcaster Thought Scour. But I think I would like to try maybe to snap a, uh, a Thought Seize on, on my turn here. Could have Kulligan's Commanded too. I should have definitely taken more Thought with that play. So we have another Blood Crypt. And if my opponent decides to Field of Ruin it here, I'll probably... Act. Okay. So I think I'm going to go Snapcaster Thought Scour.
Oh no, I can't do that. God, I'm all over the place. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, I was just was not even thinking. I'm not playing this game that well. Start off the mulligan that I just have not. I've been like moving too quickly. I'm just gonna counter this. We can still stub it to fairy. So which I am all about. So we know our opponent's got a purge and six unknowns. Yeah, I'm still in it, but just not super playing this well. So I think I'm just going to go to discard. Like I could jam a last hope and get back a Snapcaster Mage, but then my opponent lands a Teferi, and I'm in trouble. I can just purge it. Yeah, I think I'm going to... I don't really want to play anything. Let's see what my opponent does here. But we're just gonna ditch this. I'm gonna I only ditch I ditched that one instead of the last hope. Yes, but what am I what's my alternative line? Jam a Liliana into five open mana? But I don't think just jamming is necessarily gonna win me the game either. Like I need to find a way to get I need to like get a red source and I need to like lean on my opponent on the end of their turn. It is in kind of a tough spot no matter what. And especially, like, if I didn't have counter magic, then I, w I wouldn't do it. But... So my opponent's going to cycle through a cryptic command. All right, we're just going to... Now we got to act. So we're going to deal with this. This is what I would like to be doing to my opponent. I would like to be initiating at their end step, but that is not what is occurring because I just I don't have enough I don't have enough life like my life's not low enough to press the action like Death Shadow. Okay, search is bad. All right, Inquisition is something that I can at least fire off in my main phase. All right, search lands. I like draw fetch land. Jeez. So this we need to get this purge out of here. My opponent gonna fire off a uh, electrolyze. Is that what's going on here? Or are we just logic nodding to the moon? Okay. So this Ascanta is going to bury us. Like, we started to at least, like, we're, we're you know, we're ahead on cards because my opponent has been making land drops, but, like, this Ascanta is, is going to be really bad. I wonder if Friedman's plan was bringing engineered explosives against this deck. You know? Because, okay, so I'm just going to take the purge. Because he has such... Um, I did see three CMC Sarkin. I didn't get enough time to think about it. Uh, Magic, Magic Heroes 126. I, I don't really like this list necessarily. I think it would be much better with... Without the Faithless Looting Package and with Serum Visions. I'm just high on Serum Visions. I like Serum Visions a lot in this deck. It's not really a knock to Faithless Looting. Like, you could tell me that they should be playing Looting or Serum Visions and uh, Faithless Looting. Okay, so that's the Drew. 
So we have a window. We're just going to jam Liliana here. Because we know, unless they, as Kanta into something, it's going to resolve. And I think we're just going to go up with it. Because if we roll down against Snapcaster Mage, I'm going to have to discard. Yeah, I like the Bobbles. I forgot how, how nice Bobble was. All right, so they found a cryptic. Yeah, I think that the lootings are like the, the lootings are fine. They're they're good. Not much else than that, but you know they're okay. Nothing special about them, but they're they're in there. They do they do their thing well, but I don't think. I don't think they're worth... I would not play one Faith of Sluting before four Serum Visions. Okay, Snap Purge. So they have Snap Purge with Cryptic Up. So I need to draw Land and Thought Seize in my next draw. If I draw Land, then I can stub the Cryptic at least. Okay. So we're doing okay. Like, we're getting back... We're actually kind of getting back into it through just mana efficiency. Like, our spell is just not casting... Or not uh, costing as much as our opponents. Yes, I did. Yep. Yeah, I totally get what he's what he's saying. Like, he, he wants to jam... and He wants to jam... Um, whatever they are on turn two. Excuse me. Like... He wants the turn to uh, Gurmangler, which I totally get, and I think is very uh, viable with Bobbles. I don't think that you need, um, I don't think you need whatever it is to to play with those and be okay. I don't think you need Faithless Looting. I think you can do it with just Serum Visions, Thought Scours, and Bobbles. They drew an unknown card. They bottomed with their search. I do think you can play a leaner 17 land list. Okay, so they drew a helix. So they have helix, the four cards we know, and then an unknown one. Alright, that's not bad. Oops, so let's get our Death Shadow down. And just keep going up with this. There's so much self-control. You're all about the LD. I'm going to stub my opponent's path. And then probably going to K Command. The fact that they don't have a colonnade is really nice. So I think I'm going to K command my opponent now before they can untap and as Kanta. I'm just going to return a Snapcaster Mage. Okay, that works out. So what did they ditch? They ditched a verdict. So where's this helix coming at? Me? That's bold. I guess it's not that bold with the Supreme Verdict. So now they're just working to burn me out. Well, that's going to be tough to do with the amount of Death Shadows and Recursion that I have, especially with this Liliana. It's going to be hard to, hard to do it that way. So they kept the card on top, which is not good for the home team. They're probably just looking for another bolt. Like I would assume they kept a burn spell, and they're just looking for the last burn spells. Okay, so there's Helix. Yeah. Yep, I got it. 
All right. They got me. That was just a, kind of an awkward draw where I couldn't I couldn't deploy a threat to start. And I think I got pinned. A little. I just got pinned. Like I just got pinned. I couldn't I couldn't execute my game plan. My cards are so much worse without pressure on the board than with pressure on the board. So they end up getting around to us. Nope, Max has already popped. Holy shnikes. Qs are moving fast tonight. I'll probably just get one league in tonight. Look to do a little bit more streaming on Friday. Put a mulligan, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mulligan as well. All right, we'll keep this one. It's basically the same hand as last time, but we have the option to bolt ourselves if we need to. We determine that to be the play. I'm gonna so five five damage, eight damage. I'm gonna put this on top just in case we're not pl we're playing against something like super degenerate, misty rainforest. This, so we're playing against infect. No, we're not. What? I don't know what this is. We're playing against like an Abzan company deck. We are. This is probably an abysmal matchup in game one. Let's go and find Battle Rage. Yeah. Wow, one lander. Okay. All right, we're going to lead off. We're going to give the looting. All right, nice. So let's ditch this. Let's ditch our Stubborn Denial. Looting was good there. Let me see. Let me see two cards when I needed it. So that's worth. It's worth noting. I actually just made a video with them today. Uh, Gender and lightning. Oh, so we are playing against the, the black green infect deck. Oh, nice. So you want to talk about bringing the heat? Yeah, we're just gonna get rid of that become immense. I'm gonna play two five fives. Yeah, I don't um I can do videos for them or articles for them whenever I want to. It's kind of a in and out thing. So this deck top aided the PTQ, I believe. We played against the last two. Two decks have been two big PTQ decks. So do I want to... I think I'm actually going to hold this bobble. Well, no, I'm going to cast the bobble on my opponents on my turn here. And then if I don't see anything, then I'll have my draw step to manipulate with Faithless Looting. This is where Faithless Looting doesn't look good. Where I mulliganed, and I was already down a card from casting it the first time. Yeah, I think you'll find something from me on top deck on probably like, I don't know, probably the, be the beginning of next week. Now, why do you think I wanted to loot there? Because I'm, I'm going to ditch two out of three cards I see, right? Okay, so drawing an elf. My opponent just asked me if it's become immense. You could have had a fetch land for extra damages. So what is the damage? What does the damage accomplish? Like what does dealing three more damage really accomplish out of out of this play here? Like when I, I would like to hit a removal spell or something like that in order to move through the board, I can get that. But I think the value of Faith of Sluting is having a decent amount of cards in your hand that you can move. Okay. All right. Fetch Shock. Okay, that that's legit. That's legit. That's something I didn't see. Well, now... All right, so now, <laughs> yeah, you were, 
You were uh, you would have been. So what would we have done here? If we had this bob on our hand, we would have looting into this fetch land. Yeah. Because that's one of the things that I don't think about very much while playing with looting. No, you were right. You were right there. Uh, prim. Primo primo generator. Twitch chat is dummy. Well, one of the things that's annoying from being a streamer is when someone from Twitch chat says something like gives a line of play and then doesn't say anything about it. So now they have to chump my death shadow. You know? Like, I would rather than... So both death shadows are still lethal, so there's no real point to doing this. I guess I could have put him to one. So... And I guess I'm going to do it anyways. So I, I should have just fetched. I was, I was talking. But, but like when somebody when somebody from Twitch chat like suggests a line of play and then there's nothing associated with it, then that gets kind of frustrating. Because, like, why did I mess up? I oftentimes do mess up because streaming is difficult. It's just nice to know. So I think it's this deck. I just want all of my removal spells. Like, this whole package seems great. I think I like cutting Street Wraith against this deck because I like making the deck more focused. Uh, cutting Anglers seems good. I don't think I need Battle Rage against his deck to operate. And I think something like... I think the discard spells are worse than the removal spells on average. Now I wonder... So here's something I've been thinking about. So with these Faithless Lootings, after Sideboard... Yeah, so when you're supposed to sideboard with this Faithless Looting deck, and your deck becomes more focused after sideboard, is it correct to actually take out your Faithless Lootings? Because going down a card kind of matters more when all of your cards are good. You know what I mean? So I think I'm going to try that. I don't know if it's right or not, but I'm going to give it a whirl. Because theoretically, I want all my cards. It's like the cost of going down a card's a lot. Yeah, these Death Shadow decks just slaughter these Infect decks. We'll be right back and we'll grab some more water. Okay. So I think I like this hand on the draw. I've got one threat that's a little... It's going to be slower than this threat, actually. But I've got double removal spell and a double cantrip. So I think I'm going to keep this. If I hit one more land, I'm in really good shape with this hand. Okay. I can buy that. It's cheaper. Interacts. I feel like if you drop two more Gurmag, yeah, they're kind of they're kind of like a package deal. So we hit like the best card in our deck. So I'm actually gonna get Serum Visions or Steam Vents, even though I hate getting Steam Vents because casting this Grim Lava Mancer is gonna be really good this game, and I would like to, I still need to filter through my deck to hit land drops. But Lava Mancer's Lava Mancer's been the like, it's part of a sort of a transformational sideboard card, sideboard plan for this deck. All right, let's land. God, I'm so good at this game. One, two, I think it's just going to get down Angler, put the shields down on the Lava Man. But the worst they're going to do is fetch a Dryad Arbor here to get at me. My opponent goes, I hate discard spells. I'd rather just not now. My opponent seems like a nice guy. 
I think you got to be a nice guy to play Infect, you know? Oh, I didn't even think about that with the Herb Org making the Steam Vents, so it's, it's not even that bad. There you go. Law of Master vs. Humans is very good. I don't want to attack because they could fetch uh, Dryad Arbor. And I would rather keep this thing around. Yes. I think I think I think your this that shadow deck is actually favored against humans after sideboard. I think you're a very much a dog. When Reflector Mage is good, you're a real big dog. Yeah, what a world we live in. So I can't kill this thing, right? Protection from red and white. I can block it. I could just EE -E for three. I can EE for three to get it. I probably should just attack. I'm going to have to block this thing. Does this thing have double strike? No. Imagine this thing had double strike. The problem is, yeah, I think I don't think we're attacking. So let's go red, blue, black. Play out a big... That's what you've done? That makes sense. That's another line there, because then I, I could have also played out the shadow, gone thought scour and lightning bolts. I think because I have the shadow, I'm going to block this Phyrexian Crusader if they attack. Now I see the awkward play of my playing this engineer explosives because like I would like to block with angler just to make sure and they might just let it die and make my angler a 1-1. One -one. I've learned when you when you play against decks where Grim Lava Mancer is good, you don't really need a lot to win. Because like Lava Mancer usually buys you all the time you need. Yeah, I mean, he could he could pump it to kill the angler. And then I'm down, like, kind of my clock, but I'm pretty sure I'm okay just sitting here on my hands. We'll be right back. All right, there's a plague stinger. Jeez. All right, let's go get a blood crypt. Play this death shadow. And then just pass. Again, I'm not really in a hurry to do anything. I've got two lightning bolts. I have a grim lava mancer. I have an explosives out. Like, I'm really not. I'm not looking to do too much. Like, like the last thing that I want to do is pop this explosives, get aggressive, and then my opponent just kill me. I think because I have two blockers, I can. Well, no, there's no point to doing this because I can't. Like, I guess I could go, like, Thought Scour now. Because I can just block this, and it doesn't do anything. So I can go Thought Scour now. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go Thought Scour, and I'm going to try to hit this Plague Stinger. Jeez. Which effectively makes this Grim Lava Mancer a two-for-one. 
if my opponent decides to um, if my opponent decides to save this, like we trade the fatal push plus a pump spell for the lava man, which is okay. And then I have one card in hand, and we have two lightning bolts. All right, so we still get the two for. And then I'll probably start getting aggressive next turn. I definitely wouldn't have done it if they didn't have a bunch of cards in their hand. I guess one, two, three. They could kill me with if they if they have a become immense might. Become immense. Looks like they got me. Looks like you were right there, Magic Jirio. Yep, they got me. T. So that's tough. I, 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 I screwed that up. Yeah, I screwed this up. This is my fault. Like, I didn't I didn't quite think that the ink moth would get me from that low from that far down. Let's get out of stubborn denial. Let's get one more counter spell. I think I like the I think I like what the chat was saying about the discard spells. Yep. Yep, that was that was my fault. I just got aggressive with the Ink Moth Nexus. I could have just let my guy die and then play defense with double lightning bolt up. Which is probably what I should have done. Alright, this hand's great. I have a very, this is a very good hand. Probably going to lead off on Blood Crypt. Hopefully we don't toss this game. We'll hold our dismember because that's an answer to the uh, the two two, which causes some fits, causes us to hold up our mana. Opponent mulliganing is rough. Like them, them mulliganing and then running into an ace sideboard card is pretty tough. And they kept on all what they do with their scry. They put a card on the bottom too. That's impressive that they killed me. No, click the wrong land. It's all right. We'll lead off with an Inquisition. All right. So I'm going to take their Inquisition here because I can play my Lava Mancer out. They can Fatal Push it, and I can rebuy it with Colgon's Command, hopefully killing a creature. I would like to just protect my hand. So let me check out my top card here. If I like my top card, I'm not going to play Lava Mancer. If I don't like it, then I'm going to play the Lava Mancer. Yeah, we're just going to get the Lava Mancer out here. They're going to push it, and then hopefully we get to do something with our um, with our whatever it is, our uh, Colagon's Command, where we get to pick a creature off. That would be great for us if our opponent went uh, fetch push play played stinger. That would be the best thing for us here. Okay, they didn't they didn't play around stubborn now. Good on. My opponent seems to know what's going on here. It's another good draw. Trades of the vines. Leaves a body around. Mm-hmm. Alright, so we're, gonna, we're definitely attacking with this lava mancer before combat. And then I think I'm just going to get aggressive and I'm going to snapcast or inquisition them. This goes and gets watery grave. This will trade for more than likely a vines. So my opponent's probably going to push this. Push this lava man. If they don't push it, then good on them. I should have fetched another red source. But then I should have tapped differently. 
just would have been better when you do that. Alright, we're just gonna take the vines. My opponent's got land. Okay. So they just have become events. That's their last card. Wow. So I can just make them discard, or I can rebuy K command, bolt this, K command, rebuy, um, rebuy Lava Man, and then I just, I don't really see. I don't really see how they get out of this one, but I said that last time. I could have made them discard, but like that card's basically a discard without a creature. Let me do another Snapcaster Mage. That can probably just speed up the clock and snap bolt them. Send this upstairs. Just like keep on keeping on. Yeah, this has been this has been quite the game. I put a mulligan into a really good hand for myself, so like it's tough. All right, three, two, nice. Thirty viewers. I hope everyone's having a good day. This is a good, uh, good stream for me on the weekdays. I think I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back Friday, and I think I'm going to be streaming something like this. Probably adjusted sideboard a little bit. I just copy and pasted Friedman sideboard into here. But I'm going to try these bobbles back out with Serum Visions, and try just the third, just three Snapcaster Mages instead of four. Just kind of narrow down a little bit. I think this is what I'm going to stream on Friday, unless I start really rattling it off with Friedman's deck. Like if Friedman's deck keeps putting up results, then I'll go with that. But But I think this is what we're going to at least, what we're going to start with. Oh, geez. Going everywhere. Oh, God. Oh, I got paired. I think you want a couple more lands. Well, even the the, the versions without, um, the versions without, uh, whatever it is, um, the more conventional versions, I'm going to keep this hand. I have the Bobble Trick and Stub and a Death Shadow. The, the versions that play 18, that don't play Faith and Suiting, play 18 lands. They don't play Bobble. I'm going to guess we're playing against Valakut here. And I'm fairly certain that's what we're doing. Which I do like playing against Valakut. Valakut's a pretty good matchup for these Death Shadow kind of decks. That's gas. So we can just hold, you know, there's no need to cycle this right now. If we have to crack our fetch land, we should cycle. But going down to 17 is still good, you know. I might be able to go Angler and hold up. What do we got here? A Mardu Pyromancer deck? Oh, no, we're playing Hollow One. All right, I'm going to cycle this. Okay. I like Stubborn Denial against this Hollow One deck, so... So that is also an added feature. And then on my turn, I'm probably just going to go Death Shadow Gear Mag Angler. I can't exact, I can't get the Angler down, which is a bit of a tilt. So let's fetch my Black Source. This is a bad matchup. Looks like we've got a draw to help win, us, win it for us, but this Hollow One deck is tough. Looting's not bad. One, two, three, 
We don't play any K commands in our main deck, so we can get rid of these Street Wraiths and this Death Shadow. Yeah, we have the tools. Like, we're going to... We have the tools to do well here. Especially if that's just... That's their only... That's their follow-up here. We're in pretty good shape. Okay, so let's start off here. Alright, we definitely want the Battle Rage. I do want one more land because I would like to be able to play Death Shadow and protect it. That was a very good looting. I might try something like two lootings, two Thought Scours. But I also like playing with three Watery Graves and only two Red Sources. You got to attack. So you got you got three lightning bolts packed up. I didn't think about that while we were going here. This is an angler. I still think we've got it here. Yeah. And we're just going to turn them sideways and battle rage them out of the game. This is 16 minus 5 is 13 on the dot, plus 5 is 18. Just put them negative 5, my math's right. Maybe more than that, probably more than that. Negative 3. Can't do math. Okay, so against this deck, I don't really like my counter spells very much in the draw. I don't like Snapcaster Mage either because um, because of whatever it is, Layla in the Void. But I think I think that we need Gurmag Angler. Like this is a loss that I'm gonna take. It's, it's hard because I want to board out some of each one of these. But, like Gurmag Angler wins me games in this matchup. So I think I'm gonna go something like this. Board in this because it's anti hollow one cards. Keep in like a stub and then probably just hedge here. Maybe keep in one more stub and cut another Snapcaster Mage. Give me one second. Math is for blockies. What's up, Tweety? Nice. Nice. Dismembered. Well, Dismembered's good, right? Because Dismembered deals with uh, Angler, Hollow One, etc. Fatal Push. I cut my Fatal Push when I'm on the play. When I'm on the draw, I like having another answer to whatever it is. Flame Blade Adept? Like, this, this gets traded for a Stubborn Denial. Play draw. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, so the fatal push will definitely come out when I'm on the play. Oh, I gotta put some more cards in here. Oh, these two denials. We're gonna have two denials in here. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make room for our four denials when I'm on the play. Here. Because it's it's nice being able to get under the turn one burning inquiry. The counter spells are definitely a little worse than the draw. Yeah, this hand's pretty good. Pretty aggressive. It could be anything. Don't burn any inquiry me. Don't do it. Cycle Street Wraith. Alright. That's kind of worse, because that likely means when we're looking at a hollow one here. Wow. Nothing. Okay. Get this watery grave. I think I'm going to lead on Thought Seize. I think you want it on the play. I, I think when you're on the play, you can get under Burning Inquiry. 
I think I think you definitely want four of them. Um, I'm gonna take this angler just in case. I can take the fatal push next turn, but if something weird happens here, like I mean, they could probably could also just cast it. I believe. So they hit this guy, which is good for them. So I know my opponent's hand. My opponent's got right here. So let's get this blood crypt. Uh, we'll go Inquisition to start. Get rid of their faithless looting. I'm my my death shadow's gonna growl. All all well and on its own. All right. And we can just grow it next turn if we need to. Like we can have a productive turn of like, okay, so there's the inquiry. So they hit Goblin Lore Blood Crypt. So they still have the mountain. And we didn't look like our hand kinda got better. Oh, this guy comes back too? Well at least we'll be able to block the blood gas. And you can do this because of how Death Shadow works. My opponent just has the mountain in their hand. Okay. So with the mountain coming back, that means... They're going to be able to go Faithless Looting. They're going to be able to do four damage to me next turn. Their creatures have to attack. So four. So we're, we can theoretically kill our opponent. As long as they don't come up with haste damage. Because they're going to flash back looting. They're probably going to ditch enough so that they can get the blood gas back. Keep their land. Or they might not keep their land because like what they have on the board is lethal. But they're not going to be able to block us. So Not there, right? They were at too high of a life total. Unless I was just not paying attention there. I might have missed it. I've had I've been thinking out loud and I might I might have I might have missed it. Because I have this lightning bolt. They're at fifteen. Dismember down to eleven. Bolt them. I'm one off, right? They'd gone to one? Darkling seven. So they played their mountain. And they flash back their looting. And we're, we're definitely bolting this. Okay, so just inquiry and that. So now we just hit this. No, no, no big deal. No big deal. I wasn't, to tell you the truth, I wasn't super paying attention. And now we just hope they have nothing. Okay, so if we draw a fetch land, we can deal with that. Battle Rage, fetch land wins us the game. Yeah, that's a good draw. So we get exactly our last basic. Dismember this. Crack in. And we got there. Lucky draw. Needed to hit a land. We did. They're looking good. All right, let's go for the four-one here. So I've liked the lootings. I think that the lootings are decent. I think they are. I'm coming around on them. What I really miss is I, I really miss serum visions. So maybe if I go back to this deck here and I make like just split these thought scours to be two and two. Cause I think thoughts I think thought scour is weaker than and then I'll have to change, I'll have to add another blood crypt to my deck. Because I currently play three watery graves, one steam vets, one blood crypt. I'll have to change that around. I think playing four. I think playing that many Snapcaster mages is kind of loose, and I think playing without Seer Visions is loose.
I'm a big Bobble guy. I, I like the more I play with Bobble, the happier I am with it. It's just free. Like Bobble is free. And Bobble even Bobble even gets better with Serum Visions because like you can Bobble a whatever a counter spell or or a removal spell on top of your deck. Know it's there. Crack your Bobble and draw. No, that's another, like, Teddy, that's another thing on top of that. I do like Ben's sideboard. I'm a little lower on this card than he is. I tend to think explosives is a little clunky. Um, I like to braid. Uh, the brutalities, um, I can I can take it or leave it. But I, 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 I can take it or leave it on the brutalities and the explosives. My, my hot take is there are very few decks that actually wreck Tron. I think Tron, like, if I had to play one Magic Tournament for my life, I would probably play Tron. And that's just because, like, the deck, I think the deck's very good. I think it's miserable, but it's very good. This is a good band. Keep this. I'm going to fetch Watery Grave on, well, let me cycle my Street Wraith first. Because I might gain information to determine what I have to actually fetch for. Because I'd like a black source, but I also want a blue source. Blue and red. I could get steam vents, but I, I tend to think that steam vents is like always a mistake. Well, but like Tron is just like so. I, I just think Tron is so good. I think it's so redundant. Like, I think it's just a fantastic deck. Um. I should have done this, but I'm, I'm going to go get the Blood Crypt. I think that... Let me go look at my look at my deck here, though. Because I need another land for the Snapcaster to be good. I should have just played the Swamp, which is a mistake. So I can draw my Snapcasters, Stubborn Denials. I already have a black or red card in my hand. I'm just going to get the Blood Crypt. I'm not going to get ham, Hamstrung here. Yeah, I mean, I think Tron's really good. Like I think I think Tron I think Tron's likely the best deck in the format. Okay, Arbor Elf, Birds of Paradise, Blood Moon, Blood Moon, All oh, Ryan, Jesus. Okay, so four, five. So I can take an Arbor Elf. I can't take both Blood Moons. So I should take Arbor Elf and then bolt the bird. And hopefully that buys me enough time. If I can get a threat down, I should be fine. You got watery grave? I, what I should, what was right for me to do was to play the swamp. That's where I made the mistake. I think I fetched the right hand, land with what is in my hand, but I should have played the swamp. I should have just given up on the quick death shadow to, in order to give myself the freedom. Well, yes, but like, if I don't fetch the blue source, there's a chance that I've automatically mulliganed, and I'll, I like. This costing three versus this costing one is like sort of the argument, right? Like, like th this is going to be relevant much earlier than this. We're going to need to draw another land for this to be relevant. But that's what. That's just the information that we have. We could draw other things, but like, like I said, the the, the right thing for me to do is to play the swamp and not make the decision. All right, we got lucky. We, we we've been we've been drawing well tonight, getting out of some stuff. Yes, that's where I made the mistake. And I could just not. Yeah, I, don't, I think we're just off it on the whole blood moon playing around blood moon train. We're gonna get we're gonna get water grave. We're gonna get death shadow down next time. We're going to delve for Gurmag angler. And we're just going to hope that them taking a turn off and blood mooning us ends up putting them too far behind and they die. <coughs> I think 17's fine. If you've got Bobbles in your deck, I think 17's fine. Bobble plus Street Wraith helps out a lot with that. Alright. This doesn't really matter. 
There's probably no need for me to actually do this. They're just going to moon me next turn. Um, I'm going to take the Blood Moon to hope that they Molten Rain me to grow my Death Shadow. Not really a lot of point to doing it, but... Like they could have drawn like a tireless tracker, I guess. Like that was the reasoning behind doing that. We're not going to be able to cast our Snapcaster, so it doesn't really matter. So yeah, a lot of people, when I play this deck, they ask me like, what do you do when you play against Blood Moon with having such a greedy mana base? And I'm like, well, there's there's not there's like a non-zero amount of time where if your opponent just takes turn three off, they die. And that's what they're gonna do here. So here comes Blood Moon. Yep. Should have held the swamp. Seven, yeah, that does it. You're talking about I just missed the land drop? I probably could have sequenced a slightly different than that. I was more into just talking. Yeah, opponent scoops it up. Okay, so against this deck, this deck's an awkward, an awkward deck to sideboard against. Like, I think I want all of my little interaction. Like, I don't think I want Snapcaster Mages. I like my discard. I like Disdainful Stroke. I like Stubborn Denial. Even a card like a Braid's not bad. Well, Braid is bad on the draw. So maybe I just want to cut two Snapcaster Mages and bring in just some more Counter Magic. I could bring in Engineer Explosives, but I just want to do anything with three mana but play Engineered Explosives on turn three. I could just cut two Snapcasters. I guess what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I guess what I want to do. I don't really want anything else. Like, like. It just feels so mopey, being for three against the Blood Moon. That I think I'd rather just be low to the ground. Explosives for one. Okay. So I think that these Snapcaster Mages are going to be bad. So let's just try this. I don't. I don't play a lot with EE, so let's just give this a try. Snapcaster Mage doesn't seem like what I want to do. With this, with how this deck is geared, I've not, I've been just thoroughly underwhelmed with Snapcaster Mage. Definitely gonna play three Snapcaster Mages in the next, in the next one that I play. Okay, so we have an answer to a turn one play. This hand's gas. This just shows why Dismember is so good. You would you would not play EE? -E? Okay. EE -E is a card I do not have a lot of experience with, so I do I do like just boarding it in, you know, randomly. Give me something to point this dismember at. Come on. Utopia Sprawl. All right. It's too slow. That's what I was worried about. But Snapcaster Mage is also slow as well. Mm hmm. You can answer the dork. But Snapcaster Mage isn't going to answer the dork, right? Yeah. So I think we're just going to go fetch land. I think we're just going to go fetch land. We're going to hope to stub a blood moon.
Yeah, we're going to hope to stub the Blood Moon. I'm not really going to tap out Faith of Looting to not ever cast a spell again. <coughs> and then hopefully, hopefully they just play like a Tireless Tracker. Tireless Tracker is what we want to see. Some guy that I talked with on Facebook about Death Shadow sent me a Grixis Shadow deck that didn't play any Snapcaster Mages in that. Trinosphere. That is probably worth it. Considering I cannot cast anything if that resolves. Let's look at the Steam Vents. Alright, let's start off with this looting. Okay. Do I want a third land? I probably don't want a third land. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I want a third land. I, th I think flashing back this looting is going to be just like super magical Christmas land, and we already have two cantrips for free, so they have a Blood Rails coming. I probably should give myself the option to draw. The problem is they cast... I'm just going to bobble myself here, because it, I want to... If they miss a land drop and have another Blood Moon, I want... So we have two e, we have e, e coming. I want two draws at a Stubborn Denial. So I gain no information off of this. But I just want to have two looks at a denial. Okay. So Blood Bright Elf that doesn't hit Blood Moon is not bad for us. I guess if it hits Stone Rain, it's pretty bad. We pitch Bobble and Looting. Okay. That's not great. I guess for this, this is this is why I should have done this. We were we were chatting about this. The the next land, I just got greedy with this land. I thought like because I had two bobbles that I'd be fine drawing another land. Yeah, see now I'm fucked. Yep, 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 yep. I get it. And here is here is where that land would have been good. That just makes sense. So I was sitting there and thinking about it. I was like, the land destruction deck. So now I just toss this game. Okay. You get to Cascade into Arbor Elf. I'm just going to dismember the Blood Red Elf. Mm -hmm. I should have just seen around that, though. Yeah, and now we're... I might as well just play this EE for one out. What could they do here? One, two... I should actually... I think I'm just going to dismember this, because they couldn't they land like an Inferno Titan? One, two, four... Yeah. They, they, they do play cards like Inferno Titan. It's either Inferno Titan or like a top deck Blood Red Elf that I'm worried about here. And then if I... Like, they can already cast Storm Breath Dragon. That's basically going to kill me anyways. So, might as well just go for, make so cut them off what I can cut off. They can still have a land titan. Alright, so the Arbor Elf. Is that it? You know, the Arbor Elf's legit damage because of the Kessig Wolf Run. I'm making all my plays too quickly. I'm not thinking about it. Okay. I, mean, I would have probably had to dismember that at some point because of the wolf run. All right, gas. Just get our swamp. There's no need to take 42 damage. The awkward thing is, if I want to ee this thing away, I have to ee my own death shadow away, which would suck.
Whether I kept that land, I could have had, could be looting. Blah. All right, that's these. Dude, I love it when I mess up and my deck is good enough to reward me and fix me. All right, there we go. We got the 4-1. We got the 4-1, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see, do we have any subscribers to open a chest for? Nope, y'all suck. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. So, so let's go back to Ben's list here. So I like I like what this deck's doing. I like I like how aggressive it is. It's just aggressive. It's low to the ground. You know, I'm a fan of what's going on. What I don't like is I don't like I really dislike these four Snapcaster mages, and I dislike not having Seer Visions. I think to remedy that, and I don't know about a sideboard. I haven't played a sideboard enough. To remedy that, I think we're going to try this on Friday, and then I will either play this version of the deck, or I will play um, Ben's deck here.